Hey guys, welcome back to This Month in T-Science for December 2021. This month, I chose one about Pu'er tea. So there's this new review that came out about Pu'er. And the title of this article is Chemical Constituents and Biological Properties of Pu'er tea. It's a massive review. This thing is 95 pages long. I poured over it for a couple of days. It's not like a quick 95 page read. These are 95 pages of really, really dense dense literature. Of these 95 pages, I broke it down into two words, all right? Again, look at the title, it's chemical constituents and biological properties. So those are kind of the two forks. So the first half of this review article, they're looking at the chemical constituents. So like, what are the compounds in PUERT? Like, what are the molecules in there? So like, they list every single molecule that is in existence in PUERT. So just to give you a, a look at how absurd this article got, <laughs> I'm reading to the chemical constituents. I find myself at section 3.3.2.2.2, procyanidin. So that's like, that's a subset of a flavin 3 all, which is a subset of flavonoids, a subset of phenol compounds, like, which, you know, in their defense, that's, they're writing to a scientific audience and I am trying to take that scientific literature and report it to a, a more casual, informal audience. So I'm not saying that what they did is not important, right? It's good to list that all out. I'm just saying to the everyday tea lover, poor drinker, whatever, most of that stuff is not really uh, relevant. But getting back to my oversimplification of this, of this paper. So I picked one uh, chemical constituent, one compound in pu'er that is actually extremely telling of its qualities and is probably the most important chemical constituent to know looking at the molecules in pu'er tea. So I picked one of those. And then the second part of this paper, right? You have the first half is chemical constituents. Second half is biological properties. So then the whole second half of the review, they're going through all of the different mechanisms through which Puerity affects health and is, is bioactive within a living system. So again, they go like they go into 14 different parts on the biological properties. They got like uh, antioxidative effects, antihyperglycemic, so that's the blood sugar lowering, antihyperlipidemia, so that's blood fat, that's cholesterol lowering, neuroprotection, so the effects of puer uh, chemical constituents in the brain, Alzheimer's disease prevention, anti-diabetic antibacterial. All right, so they so they go through and they list all these different ways that puer has been found and shown through various studies to be bioactive and affect uh, health, basically. But what's cool, which I do really appreciate from this paper, is that at the very end, they produce this beautiful figure. It's extremely simple, not beautiful aesthetically, but beautiful in an information presentation uh, perspective. So. They, they go through, and the title, and I'll show it to you right now, Bioactivities of Pu'er Tea. It's a three-part Venn diagram. So on the left, you have in vitro studies. So in vitro is just when you've only assessed that bioactive compound outside of a living system, just like looking at it with a microscope or, you know, all these different ways to do in vitro studies. Those are helpful. Those are good but it's not very telling of how it's gonna act in the body. So in the body is in vivo. So that's the right side of this Venn diagram. You got in vivo animal models. So that's basically just mouse studies. And then the bottom rectangle there is human studies, which is kind of like ding, ding, ding. That's really what we're interested in, in terms of measuring the effects of tea on human health. Right. So now in terms of human studies, we have antihyperglycemia. So that's the ability of puer tea to lower that postprandial spike in blood sugar. So after you eat something sugary, your blood glucose goes way up and puer tea has been shown to be able to reduce that spike in blood glucose, which is extremely important, extremely valuable. So you can see that that one's human studies and in vivo models hasn't really been shown in vitro though. Uh, but then right in the center, in that sweet spot of all three, you have antihyperlipidemia, lowering the amount of uh, fat and cholesterol in your blood, right? Because that's a huge risk factor for cardiovascular disease, etc. So getting those uh, that blood cholesterol down, 
that was that's the one pathway of puer t mediated health effects that has been shown in vitro in vivo and in humans so i honed in on that rather than talk about each one of these different pathways i was like all right that's worth reporting on because that has enough evidence to report on it with confidence so I looked at the research that they were reviewing in terms of that antihyperlipidemia route. It was a really, really well done study. So we'll get to that in a second. So those were the two words that I used. So the first word is theobrownin, right? So now we're getting back to that one chemical constituent of puer that among all of the ones that they reported on is really wor actually worth knowing. Theobrownin, all right? And then we're gonna talk about theobrownin formation in puer, and then we're gonna get into antihyperlipidemia effects. So. Without further ado, let's dive into Thea Browning. So this is a pretty simple concept here. So when you bite into an apple and you have that white flesh, that core inside the apple and you let it sit for 20 minutes and come back, it's kind of turned brown. So that's oxidation. On the spectrum of T polyphenol oxidation, the least oxidized you have these catechins um, and then they oxidize into theoflavins. So these are like golden color. So flavus is the Latin word for gold. So theoflavins is like these golden compounds in tea. Then they oxidize further into theorubigins. Rubigin is red, right? Ruby red. So these are getting bigger and darker and more complicated as they oxidize. And then after theorubigins, then they further condense and grow into what's called theobrownins. And we haven't really discovered, um, we haven't really discovered the molecular structure of these theobrownins yet, but we know they exist. I'm making puer right now. You can see like, that's jet black. Everybody who drinks ripe puer or aged raw puer knows that puer is the darkest tea. I mean, it is jet black. So these theobrownins are what create <clears throat> that color. They're classified as a phenolic pigment so they are still polyphenols. They have these phenolic compounds in them, which kind of mediate some of their health effects, but they're a pigment, so they have color. So puer, as it's fermenting, it, uh, and we didn't really get into the, to the processing of puer yet. I'll touch on that in a second. I'll come back to that. But as puer is fermenting, these catechins, they oxidize more and more and more, and they end up at theobrownins. And then as, as catechins are oxidizing, they're getting less astringent. So this, it's slowly s smoothing out and rounding out in terms of taste. So by the time you get to theobrownins, it's like pretty smooth. And that's kind of part of why puer tea is so smooth to the taste. And these theobrownins are why it's colored this dark. And then theobrownins are a big factor of the health effects of puer tea. Let's talk one sec about puer processing. Cause that was another thing that these guys talked about in the review papers, puer processing. So. Basically, you have two types of puer tea. You have raw puer tea and you have ripe puer tea. Raw puer tea is actually pretty similar to green tea. It's a sun-dried green tea. So that's the traditional type of puer. The processing is a bit different than green tea in that the enzymes are not completely killed in that fixing process. So you still have active enzymes, which over time continue to oxidize the polyphenols and turn it darker and darker and darker with time. So like a 20 year aged raw puer is gonna be really dark. And it's gonna have some of these theobrownins formed in it already. Ripe puer is basically a way to accelerate that aging process. So you start with that sun-dried green tea, but then you pile it up, you heap it, and then you add water, and then you add some special microbes that are specialized in fermenting these tea leaves. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a microbial fermentation mediated process, just like cheese or just like beer. You're keeping it in hot, humid conditions, which is good for microbial fermentation. And then the tea leaves ferment over the course of like about two months, six weeks to eight weeks. And in that time, the microbes are breaking down the catechins. There's oxidation, all types of reactions happening. But importantly, you're having a shift from catechins to theoflavins to theorubigins, and then the theobrownins rise with that fermentation. Okay, 
So you can see why Theo Brown is so important because they're formed rapidly with that ripe puer processing and they're formed over time more gradually with that raw puer natural aging. But either way, the Theo Browning content is kind of like the indicator of how oxidized or how fermented the puer tea is. So these Thea Brownins, they determine the taste, the texture, the color to a large degree. Now we're going to move into that, to, to the health effects of puer tea. These scientists were looking at how puer could be more blood lipid lowering than green tea, oolong tea, or black tea, because they observed that in previous studies. And they were like, why is puer more effective than these other teas? Because green tea has the most antioxidant capacity, right? As you lose these catechins, they oxidize, you lose the total antioxidant capacity of the tea. So it's less, less of an antioxidant tea than green tea or oolong, but it's more effective at lowering lipids. It must be something specific to puer tea that makes it that effective at lowering lipids. That was their initial question. And that led them to think like, all right, so what are the compounds that are only in puer tea that the other teas don't have, right? It's not caffeine because caffeine's pretty even across the board. Um, it's not a certain amount of other compounds that doesn't change much from one tea, tea type to the next. They looked at the brown and it's like, that's a compound that's clearly elevated in puer tea that other tea types almost don't have at all. So they took the brown and they did a study. This, this is one of the studies reviewed in the review article was this study using Thea brown and specifically to measure how it lowers blood lipid levels in mice and in humans. So they had a mouse element to the study and a human element to the study. And they found commonalities in both the mice and the humans, which led them to actually identify the pathway, the molecular pathway of how these Thea Brownins are so effective at lowering blood cholesterol levels. It's a bit complicated, but I think, I believe in my ability to break it down enough for anyone to understand. Because at the end of the day, it's not that complicated. So these Thea Brownins, and, and before we start, this is a really cool mechanism because it works with the gut microbiome. It's a, it's a T microbiome human axis that we're working with here. So when you take in these Thea Brownins, actually let's, let's step back a second. So cholesterol, when cholesterol is broken down, actually let's, let's step back a second. So, okay. <laughs> My apologies, the explanation that I proceeded to give in the original video was horrific. It was bad, unnecessarily confusing because the mechanism is actually simple, okay? And I made it sound more complicated than it is and I don't want it to sound that complicated. So I'm doing this again, okay? Here we go. This is how theobrownins reduce the amount of cholesterol in your blood and your liver, okay? There's three things, three points in our little system here. First, we have cholesterol in the liver. Next, we have primary bile acids. Third, we have secondary bile acids. In the liver, cholesterol breaks down into these primary bile acids. These go to the intestines where they are broken down into secondary bile acids. And these secondary bile acids, they help us with digestion, they emulsify fats, they have their specific functions. So we need them in a certain balance. We need to have enough, but not too much. So with these secondary bile acids, which are again, the downstream breakdown products of cholesterol through primary bile acids, and they get to secondary bile acids. When, we, when our intestines and our gut sense that these secondary bile acids are too low, then they send a message through this FXR signaling molecule, this, this signaling system that goes back to the liver and the liver starts the breakdown of more cholesterol into primary bile acids so that they can be broken down into secondary bile acids, right? So it's this homeostasis system where when these secondary bile acids are really high, then the liver wouldn't be breaking down more cholesterol. But when they get low, then a message is sent to be like, all right, we need more secondary bile acids. Let's start that breakdown process of cholesterol. Here's where Thea Brownin comes in. Thea Brownin interacts at that middle point, at that breakdown of primary bile acids into secondary bile acids. So in our gut, we have both 
are innate enzymes that catalyze that breakdown of primary and secondary, but we also have a ton of microbes in our gut microbiome that mediate that transition from primary to secondary bile acids. Thea Brown has come in and they inhibit that process. They reduce the amount of microbes that are breaking these primary bile acids down into secondary bile acids. They, so they reduce the amount of microbes that catalyze that action. And then they also inhibit RNA enzymes that mediate that same transition. So what happens is that we get an increased amount of these primary bile acids and we have a decreased amount of these secondary bile acids. Now, like I said before, what that means and what happens when you have a, a reduced amount of these secondary bile acids is that it triggers the breakdown of more cholesterol in the, in the liver. So when Thea Browns come in and they stop up and gob up the system at that middle branch point, then it tells our body to pull more cholesterol out of the blood and take the big hepatic cholesterol stores, the cholesterol that's already in our liver, and use that and start breaking that down to form more primary bile acids. So that's how the triggering, the signaling system works. And then my, my initial thought was, all right, isn't that bad to have a big buildup of primary bile acids? That sounds, that sounds bad. I don't want bile acids filling my body. That that's, doesn't sound good. But what ends up happening is that we just excrete them out. You end up seeing more bile acids in the stool. So long story short, we consume the Thea Brownins in the puerh tea. It interferes with the signaling system. It, it triggers the breakdown of more cholesterol into primary bile acids, which we excrete and poo out. And that's the end of the story. So that is the mechanism that these authors proposed in this paper. It's a beautiful mechanism. And it's the first really clear mechanism that has been proposed. Anyway, so hopefully this was crystal clear. So then we'll go back to the original video. I close it out. I have some finishing thoughts for you. Yada, yada, yada. Chop it up a little bit. Um, okay, bye. <laughs> so, I mean, all right, that was kind of the main stuff that I want to talk about. That was a lot of information, but the topic of this video is the chemical constituents and biological properties of puer tea. So we talked about how puer processing, both the natural aging of raw puer tea and that expedited ripening for ripe puer tea, those are a shift from catechins to theoflavins to theorubigans and finally to theobrownins. That's that dark, smooth, silky, phenolic pigment that is really the characteristic compound of puerity. Right? So theobrownin, if there's one chemical in puer to know, theobrownin is the one. Um, that's kind of what makes puerity distinct from the other T types. We talked about how it is through the actions of this theobrownin in the intestines and the interactions of theobrownin with the gut microbiome that the lipid lowering effects of puerity is, is mediated. Major compound and then major mechanism of action within the pathway that is most relevant and has the most research and evidence to support this pathway. All right, if you thought this video was remotely interesting or remotely informative, give me a like. Subscribe, that would be awesome. Share it with your friends. Give me a, give me a thumbs up, right? Send me a fax. I'll, I'll, I'll put my fax number in the description. Send me a fax of you going like this. <laughs> All right, have a good one. Stay healthy out there, stay positive. Most importantly, keep sipping tea. One love.